Hey everybody, Brian Von Vier here. If you want part one, you can actually find it on Mr. Ripper's channel, but part two of this entire series is found exclusively on my channel, Brian Von Vier on YouTube. So come check me out over there or on Twitch too. That being said, let's dive back in with what's one piece of deep secret lore you are dying for your characters to discover, part three. Pretty funny, but here we go. So, my group decided I'd be their new DM after the old one had to stop playing for a few months. He's back now, but I'm still the DM for the campaign we're on. Old DM is kinda used to all the foreshadowing. So, I give him an effective DM PC with only one condition. They can't speak. He's decided on a Dragonborn Warlock. I've been trying to reveal that the effective DMPC is the Puppeteer BBEG for a while, but it seems my subtle hints aren't enough. Maybe they'll find out once the Warlock reveals his strange, totally original set of fetishes that are <clears throat> totally not on hands. Anyways, I have already made sure that there is enough backstory to make this happen. The deepest part is that he has a foot fetish. Blech. He only did what he did because he hates humans. Just to note, the party, aside from him, consists of a tiefling bard, an elvish barbarian, and a cloaked mysterious figure, who is definitely <clears throat> not a chaotic neutral drow rogue who wants to stab things but can't for reasons involving not even getting a chance. The party is level 6 because roleplay is more fun than combat. I'm running two campaigns intermittently in a homebrew world called Talos, and there are some juicy secrets which are very close to being revealed. Both campaigns have been running for about eh, two years now. Gotta give you some background world info so the lore will be relevant. 25 years before campaign one. The Necromancers League Association has raised over 100,000 undead creatures following a mass sacrifice ritual which consumed the city of Pelutanus. They've converted a local hero to their cause and forced the remaining members of Bear Force to mobilize the continent's armies. Their battle lines fall apart in minutes and the undead horde annihilate the stragglers. Within a week, the NLA have multiplied their undead army by five and are on the doorstep of the last two cities on the continent. An unknown event stops the horde and the leaders of the NLA are compelled to flee. The unknown event is the final encounter of Campaign 2. The big secret involves one of the former Bear Force members and the de facto leader of the last civilized city after the great tide of death killed 85% of the living. This hero, Bliarin, is actually the leader of the NLA and plans to summon another undead horde while the Campaign 1 players are away on a mission. They're going to return with two months or so to prepare for another apocalypse. Billy Yarn is a reoccurring NPC in Campaign 2, before the Great Tide of Death. And that party might discover his true intentions. Why is Billy Yarn going to such lengths? He is a player in the Grand Cosmic Wager, a contest held between extraplanar beings with nothing better to do than select champions and pit them against each other. See, there are six major players who each drop the Soul Gem, not the Infinity Stones, and they can designate mortals to be their champions. If a champion dies while in pursuit of the six stones, they revive after two days. Bliarn wants to turn everyone else into undead and, using a special spell he devised, trap their souls en masse so that, in theory, they can't be revived, and he will be free to scour the world for the gems. Recap. This world's archetypical heroic NPC is actually the leader of the Big Bad Evil Guys organization and is using the apocalypse he is creating to win his soul in the Grand Cosmic Wager. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, this one starts with a call out. So first off, if Dralgum, Leninus, Vakali, and Arnald are reading this or hearing this, you know who you are. Turn right back around, especially you, Dralgum, you chaotic neutral blood hunter, you. Are you guys gone? Are they are you all gone? Get out of here. Go home. Spoilers, I guess. Good. Let's begin. <clears throat> My campaign is set so far in the continent of Bolvale. 
shared by three nations. The most powerful of these is the Kingdom of Varelia, ruled by the wise and kindly King Galtrian. The crux of the campaign is that Galtrian wants an artifact back that has been stolen from the castle, the Bloodstone. This gem is rumored to possess a great power, so much power in fact, that the capital city of Varelian, also called Varelian, is impenetrable due to its magically reinforced defenses. Now everyone wants to attack the city for themselves, as its main source of protection has disappeared, and Galatron has promised the adventurers lifelong protection and resources if they can find the gem. They will eventually learn it has been stolen by a band of as yet unnamed monks who use fire and temporal uh, chronogic magic, who have hidden the stone on the magma rifts, unhabitable islands to the east where they live. They have heard that great destruction will come out of that stone, and I want the players to think they are the villains, when in fact, they are on the right lines. I hope for them to take the stone to Galatron. Galatron will hold a feast and use the power of the stone to massacre the entire city. The power inside the stone? A trapped god of unspeakable evil and chaos who has used Galatron as his pawn. Although both of them share the same ideals of mayhem and unlimited power, Galatron is anxious for the group to get the stone back before an auspicious day when the planes are blurred, allowing the god to be released from his prison. I plan to put on Ritual by Ghost, go check out the song, it's amazing, as the god is released and as Galatron sacrifices the entire city to this god in order to create enough energy required for him to escape. This will lead to the final showdown, the big boss battle at the end of the campaign, as the travelers will have to kill a god. The whole idea is a giant reversal. The villains of the peace, the monks, will have prophesied correctly that the Bloodstone will bring about destruction, while the good King Galtrian is secretly plotting for this to happen. TLDR, good, honest, and lawful king, wants Gem back. This gem will unleash a god of chaos who wants to destroy the hub city. The enemies are thought of as friends and vice versa. My big bad evil guy introduced himself to the party a couple sessions ago and just recently one of the PCs made this comment. You'd think he would have tried to convince us to join his side. That's like, uh, evil villain 101? <laughs> Maybe he's new at this. Unbeknownst to them, that's false twice over. Several thousand years ago, he tried to destroy the world, but was defeated by a group of adventurers banished to the Far Realms. When he found his way back, he was changed irrevocably. He knows that if he tries to destroy the world again, adventurers are bound to try to stop him. So he wants to find these groups of adventurers and corrupt them to his purpose. So no, he's not new at this. And yes, he's absolutely trying to get you to join his side. I'm very excited for them to learn this so I can show them this quote. The story of a game I am running involves the party assisting the over deity of death, who was imprisoned by the other deities in a realm where he has no power. They have found a blade that is the key to freeing him, and they are currently trying to find out how to use it. Little do they know, they will soon learn that there was a war between deities of death and life, and both leaders were imprisoned. They met the other already. When they learn this, they will be given a choice, kill the deity of life and free the deity of death, or kill death and free life. Both deities will offer immortality, so they will need to decide which has a stronger say in when they die, also giving possibility of a civil war between the players. Currently planning my first homebrew world. I want to build in some NPCs that have roots going back for four or five thousand years of human history. They might find a cave that sends them on the footsteps of Fantasy Platon only to stand on top of a golden pyramid deep in the ocean. And it's on them to learn why the city is void of life despite it looks like people have been here just a day or two ago. They already know that their characters from previous campaigns are the heroes who are the legends of the Great Divine Games. Now, in the previous campaign, it was more of an adventure than a campaign. 
their characters entered some sort of trials or games created by an incredibly powerful god. If they won, they would be granted a wish that could literally be anything. However, the secret they have yet to discover is that the god was a mad one, which just wished for entertainment no matter what, and their characters gave him exactly that. So, in the lore of my new campaign, which is a millennia later, what happened after everyone got their wish granted and got home is that the god kidnapped them and placed them in endless games for his entertainment. Until the characters reached level 20 and killed him. However, the god didn't die. Instead, he got turned into an undead god, basically a lich, but way more powerful. Now this god is searching for the destruction of all their legacies, which is basically the entire society in which the current campaign is placed right now. So yeah, the god who was behind everything that happened in the previous campaign is also the antagonist and BBEG of this one. The NPC that they all think is a cocky prick and an adventurer high off his own supply was actually born into the royal king's guard. He was abducted by the big bad evil guy and forced into a thieves life. Later, his own brother tried to kill him while under the control of mind flayer minions of the big bad evil guy's army. This pushed him over the edge and he ended up killing his entire thieves guild branch. He then fought the big bad evil guy, became brainwashed to fight as a general in the BBEG's army, then later reclaimed his memories and turned himself into the holy city. Upon turning himself in, he rediscovered the truth about himself and was stationed in a monster infested country where he became one of the greatest adventurers of his time. The party thinks he's just a has-been in a bar who likes to beat up weaker people. The party had previously met him as part of a sub-quest where he had them fight him to prove they were worthy. I'm waiting for the party to find out that the chief of police who commissions them, a near elderly satyr man, is actually one of the most powerful sorcerers in the campaign and already knows how their story ends. Every time the party makes a mistake or goes against their predetermined fate, he secretly goes and creates changes that will get the party back on track whenever they encounter them, all without them knowing. I have a campaign that I am DMing for my three brothers. The plot in the beginning is that there is a large empire, several small kingdoms, and a rebellion. The players are mercs for the leader of the rebels, Tamriel Sanchez. They are eventually going to find out, once they face the emperor, Marquis, that Tamriel and Marquis are actually in league with one another. Tamriel is actually a lich, and Marquis is actually a mind flayer. Once the party finds out, the two of them will send them on a Chrono Trigger-like adventure through time. Okay, look. I love Chrono Trigger. Hello? Tamriel and Marquis's goal? To eliminate all other universes and timelines, enslaving the inhabitants of said universes and timelines, so they will become the rulers over all the creatures of the multiverse. After that, they will attempt and succeed to enslave the gods of the upper planes, and then all the inhabitants of hell. Eventually, the party will find and kill Marquis, and then finally make their way to Tamriel, and kill him once and for all. Unless something really gets derailed, but again, Chrono Trigger is my favorite game of all time. Mm, my heart. Hey everybody, Brian Font VA here, checking in after the vid, as per usual. How's everybody doing today? Hope everybody's been hydrated and staying healthy out there. If not, go get a drink and go get some food. Then, make sure to like the video, subscribe, and to ring that bell. Why? So you get notified whenever we post a new video, or in case we go live. Though, if you'd like to see us really live, check us out on Twitch, link is in the description below. And make sure to check out our TikTok for 30 to 60 second clips and to submit stories on our subreddit r slash Mr. Ripper. Also, speaking of stories, for part two of this, you want to go to my channel, Brian Vaughn VA. It's over there. I have part one here, but part two is on my channel. So come say hi on my YouTube or on my Twitch. Either one works. That being said, I try to end things on a positive note. Today's no different. I just want to let everyone know that you're loved and that you know, the world has a lot of bad decisions. Decisions that are going to make you feel like shit, sometimes make you feel great, but they're yours at the end of the day, and the world has to respect that. Sometimes the world may not agree with it, and that's, that's fine, but you, at the end, whatever you do is right. You just have to believe in yourself and actually go through with it. So don't worry about what someone else will think of you or what you have to face as a consequence. If you feel it's right for you, go do it. 
And I want you to believe in yourself. And I want you to know that I, this humble narrator from Ohio, believes in all of you. So go out there, live your best life, be the best you you can possibly be. All the love. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.